This is a document which is the opinion regarding cause of death of Tabrez Ansari. And this is the post-mortem report. And what has happened a couple of days back is that the police in Jharkhand have removed the murder charges against the 11 individuals who were char charged initially with murder. And the reason given to the police, and we're going to play out all of these sound bites, we're going to give you all of their statements, is that if there was a cardiac arrest, then the charge of murder needed to go. And on further questioning, they mentioned that he died a few days after, four days in fact, after he was attacked. And therefore, the injuries that he sustained when he was being lynched, when he was attacked and beaten to a pulp, and the causes of his death are separate, they cannot be linked, and therefore, in the interpretation of investigators, murder does not apply in this case. Now, that's rather odd and rather peculiar since the police would have read this document. We've accessed this document. Let's see what it says. Opinion regarding cause of death of Tabrez Ansari. Firstly, it's signed by five heads of department. Their signatures there in yellow on your screen. Five heads of, of department. One, two, three, four, five. And it says opinion. On the basis of the above main findings, we opine that the fracture of bone is a grievous injury caused by hard and blunt object. The bone in question is not a limb, it's the skull. I'll come to that in a moment. The combined effect of the fracture of the bone, pale organs and heart chambers full of blood resulting into cardiac arrest. So yes, the cause of death, the immediate cause of death may have been a cardiac arrest, what caused that cardiac arrest? The attack for seven hours on this 23-year-old man who was forced to say Jai Shri Ram and other things in Jharkhand because he was suspected of being a thief. So the question is this, who are the police trying to protect in this case? I mentioned the word fracture and here's where it gets even more bizarre. When the post-mortem was done after he died, when he was taken to a hospital, he was kept in a lockup after being attacked. When he was taken to a hospital and died of this cardiac arrest, a post-mortem was ordered. What did that reveal? There is a fracture of the right frontoperitoneal bone of skull. There is a subarachnoid hemorrhage 02 to 03 ml on the right side frontoperitoneal region of the brain. All the organs are pale. All the chambers of the heart are filled with blood. There is no poison found in the forensic report. This man had a brain hemorrhage, a hemorrhage in a part of his brain, and his skull was fractured. And yet, soon after the attack, when the first medical examination was done, they didn't do an x-ray of the skull, neither did they detect a very serious injury, an injury which this report calls a grievous injury. The fracture of the bone is a grievous injury caused by a hard and blunt object. What are we talking about? I'm joined now by my colleague, Monadipa Banerjee. This is a story that Monadipa has broken. This, the details of the opinion regarding the cause of death of Tabrez Ansari, reported first by Monadipa Banerjee. Monadipa, um, the sequence of events is very important because we are trying to understand whether this head injury took place when he was attacked initially or whether it took place later because if it took place later it could have happened when he was in the police lockup. What are you hearing on this? Well, uh, just to go through the sequence of events uh, which should clarify a lot of things. One is that uh, Tabrez Ansari was uh, tied to a pole or tree and he was thrashed uh, by several people starting the evening of the 17th of June. It went on late until the night. The police came early in the morning of 18th and uh, took him right away to the Sarai Kela District Hospital. Now there, apparently, uh, he complained of pain in his legs. So the doctor in charge apparently did an x-ray of his legs 
but did not do anything about an injury to his skull. So when I asked why that was so, I was told that's because the Reyes Ansari did not even complain about a head injury. So there was no x-ray done and uh, no one knew that he had a fracture. In fact, we don't know if he had a fracture then. And then later in the day, the Reyes Ansari walked out of the hospital into the police van and into a jail in uh, Saraikela. And that's where he was from the 18th till the 21st. So that's 18, 19, 20, 21. Four days later, a doctor is called in uh, to come and check the Braze who is feeling unwell. The doctor goes, gives him some treatment and leaves. Obviously the situation deteriorates and on the 22nd, in the morning, jail authorities don't even wait for an ambulance to come. They get their own ambulance and rush the Braze to the hospital. The same doctor is in attendance. Again, the, uh, the 24 year old is given treatment but he dies. It is only later that day, much later, when the doctors are conducting a post-mortem on Tavrez and Sari, that's when they discover that he has this grievous injury to his skull. How did he get it? Why didn't he complain of a pain in the head? Now, we are not medical experts, Vishnu, so I don't know if such a severe uh, you know, blow to his skull uh, could have perhaps not caused pain. I really don't know that and these are areas that need to be investigated but certainly that piece of paper to the principal of the MGM hospital in Jamshedpur signed by five heads of department who are part of a special investigation committee, a team set up to look into the death of Kabrez and Sari, they have all said the same thing and that is it is that horrific, horrific injury on his head with a blunt kind of instrument that triggered eventually the cardiac arrest that killed him really raises questions about why the police is just picking up cardiac arrest and letting that grievous injury to his head you know slip by so there are many Deepa. questions to be answered over here uh, Moridipa, uh, you asked these questions to dr b mardi the deputy superintendent of the uh, serai kela district hospital in jharkhand and what he actually said is fairly shocking. Let's listen in to what he said about the nature of the investigation done by doctors at the onset. Skull fracture ho gaya to kaise identify nahi hua jab Tabriz Ansari ko laya gaya is hospital. Humko lagta hai wo us samay darad ka waha complain nahi kiya. Ho sakta hai aur हो सकता है हमारे डॉक्टर साहब उस समय ओवरलुक किए हम नहीं कह सकते हैं वो खुद से चल के आया था और चल के जेल भेज गया था पोस्टमार्टम करने के वक्त आप लोगों ने देखा कि उसके स्कल में भी फ्रैक्चर है हाँ ड्यूरिंग पोस्टमार्टम हम लोगों ने देखा स्कल में हेयरलाइन फ्रैक्चर था हम लोग ने मैंने फाइंड आउट किया और उसको देखें तो अंडरलाइन स्ट्रक्चर में माइनूट ब्लेड था सारे फाइंडिंग को हम लोग को रिलेट करके इसी नतीजे पर आए कि ये इंजुरी जितने इंजुरीज थे ये सब उसको स्ट्रेस में डाला और स्ट्रेस लीडिंग टू कडिया के रेस्ट और उसकी मौत इतना ही बोल सकते हैं कि ये इंजुरी उसको ट्रिगर किया what exactly did the police say? Again, just for the benefit of our viewers, and you're going to hear what the police said, they said that cardiac arrest, based on two, um, two accounts or reports from doctors that can, made two consults, was the reason of death, and therefore they removed the murder charges. This seems, some would argue, fairly ludicrous in a situation like this. Have they not understood the opinion regarding cause of death, this particular document? This is what the SP, of Seraikela uh, Kharsawar had to say. कि वो उनका cause of death के बारे में जो post mortem report आया वो जो है हत्या का कोई deliberate ingredient उसमें नहीं था। लोग दोबारा जो है उस पर second opinion भी doctor MGM doctor से एक panel बिठा के हम लोग ले लिए थे। उन लोग भी जो है वो स्पष्ट एक conclusion नहीं दे पा रहे थे। So who is suffering the most in this? Tabrez, 23 years old died a horrific death uh, 
It's taken this post-mortem report to come out with the circumstances of his death. This post-mortem report and this opinion, they say the same thing. Everybody has accessed this. But the 11 people who were accused of murder are no longer being charged for murder. There are other very serious charges against them, uh, but it's not murder. Murder has been removed. Why is that the case? Somebody else who's, str who's struggling the most is the wife of Tabrez. Let's listen to what she has to say. कितने तारीख को उसकी मौत हुई थी? 22 तारीख को, 22 जून को मेरे पति को पीट पीट कर हत्या कर दी गई थी। फिर? फिर एफआईआर एफ में 300 दफा 302 लगाया गया था। फिर प्रशासन के सायों मिलकर 304 कर दिए। मुजरिमों को बचाने की कोशिश की जा रही है। क्या चाहती हो तुम? हम यही चाहते हैं कि मेरे पति को जिससे पीट पीट कर मारा गया हम इंसाफ चाहिए इसके लिए सीबीआई जांच चाहिए या वेल लेट्स ट्राई एंड गेट इंडिपेंडेंट डॉक्टर्स इन्वॉल्व्ड इन दिस इन एडिशन टू आर अदर पैनलिस्ट्स टू ट्राई एंड अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट एक्जेक्टली दिस रिपोर्ट सेज आई एम आल्सो जॉइंड बाय विक्रम सिंह द फॉर्मर डायरेक्टर जनरल ऑफ पुलिस इन उत्तर प्रदेश विद मी डॉक्टर एम वाली द सीनियर कंसल्टेंट इन द स्टूडियो uh, Dr. J. Uh, Amalod uh, Pavanathan, a vascular surgeon from Chennai, joins us uh, as well. Nalini Singh with us. Uh, and Dr. Geeta uh, Bhatt, the academic and political analyst, someone close to the RSS. Dr. Wali, you've had an opportunity of looking at this opinion. It says cardiac arrest, but am I correct in stating that cardiac arrest was caused by the lynching, the attack on him? First of all, my sympathies, sympathies to all the family members of the accused and all of us uh, collectively do something for the family, financial help, what I mean. Second is, uh, since yesterday I am seeing that cardiac arrest is being synonymized with heart attack. So when we say heart attack, it means myocardial infarction which is in common man's language heart attack. Myocardial infarction is due to the death of cardiac muscle. Mm. While it is a customary to summarize the death in terms of medical language as a cardiorespiratory arrest or cardiac arrest, which means as a consequence of something happened prior to that and in this case four days. Yes. So, this is a very clear difference that when we have cardiac arrest, it is the end result and when we have myocardial infarction, that is heart attack. I will give a simile like rail in common man's language is, it means he is going by train, but rail actually means the iron lining on which the wheels of a train bogey run. So, this is the same kind of interpretation. So, I am asking you a direct yeah. question. Yeah. Grievous injury caused by a hard and blunt object, the combined effect of fracture, bone, fracture of bone, pale organs and heart chambers full of blood resulting into cardiac arrest. In this, it is, we are correct in saying, according to this, that it means that the lynching, the attack on him resulted in that cardiac arrest. Yeah, it's a, it's a totality of the sentence which you have been showing and reading. Uh, we cannot pick up two words and which should give the idea outside that it is a myocardial infarction. It, if it was myocardial infarction, it would be detected on autopsy in the cardiac muscle. So, it is crystal clear. So, who is doing what is to be seen by the court of law at a later stage, but what you are pointing out, out is correct. It cannot to my knowledge synonymize with myocardial infarction. Dr. Uh, Amalor Pavanathan. Uh the senior vascular surgeon from Chennai joins us. Uh, doctor, uh, one of the arguments which has been raised is that he suffered sustained serious injuries, but he died a few days later as a result of a cardiac arrest, and that since there was a gap of four days, it's not enough to say that those injuries he sustained were linked with his cardiac arrest, and hence the murder charge has been dropped. Does this make any sense? No, not at all. Vishnu, I am just reading out from form number four, a medical certificate of cause of death, which all doctors are required to certify. 
when a patient dies in the hospital. Now, this form is issued by the government of India. It says cause of death, immediate cause, and antecedent cause. In the immediate cause, it's, it says, I am reading from the form, state the disease, injury, or complication which caused death, not the mode of dying such as heart failure. It specifically says that heart failure should not be written as the immediate cause. Okay, that's absolutely, you, that's, that's, I, I take that point, that's absolutely critical. So what we, the yeah. doctor is pointing out over here is that in this medical legal form, Nalini, you are required to state the reasons which caused a cardiac arrest, a heart attack, uh, call it what you want, right? In this particular case, uh, the circumstances have yeah. been neglected yeah. and it's only the outcome which has been given as a cause. Does this not strike you as being a bizarre reading, to say the least, of what is absolutely clear? Vishnu, <clears throat> it's going to sound emotional, but my sympathies today are with India. Because if we are going to do post hoc rationalizations of converting what looks like, what looks like a murder to the coveted category of manslaughter or homicide, it is clearly something that should cause our hearts to beat fast. In fact, that electrical impulse uh, in my heart when I'm hearing what you, what you just have uh, shown in your post-mortem report, in the opinion of the five doctors and in what the doctors are saying. So I think that we have to now see that if these rationalizations succeed, which is that uh, if we are uh, saying that it is caused by anxiety and stress, then it is up to us to say what is the what is the causal factor of that anxiety and stress could it be as you have said a 23 24 year old young man tied to a pole all night beaten by 11 men and then for in the seven morning hours. for I mean, seven hours and when the police comes in i'm not i couldn't see from the sequence whether they took him to the hospital straight away or they got a medical test done and then they took him to the lockup and they then they interrogated the yes interrogated yes. him because he was a thief yes. uh, alleged thief so uh, of a motorbike which actually he c could not have carried no. to in his pocket but anyway so the motorbike was not uh, found but what i'm saying is that if uh, you know, uh, Vishnu, let me sound even more uh, sentimental at the moment or uh, uh, alerting the country. You know, exactly five years ago, you and I and Dr. Wali and everybody watching this program was horrified by those clips on, uh, uh, um, you know, on, uh, uh, on social media of a 26-year-old Jordanian pilot yes, in who was, a who was, cage yeah, brutally who was day. brutally burnt. Yes, now, but yes. we said... The ISIS is this done. They should get off this planet. We yeah. should do whatever we can. Yeah. And of course, they lost territory, yeah. ISIS, but they didn't lose ideology. No. You have seen what happened in Sri Lanka yeah. on Easter that they can kill people yeah. innocent. But, but, but so I'm just saying to you that one should get alert that there is something amiss and remiss. And the uh, the district magistrate of Saraikala Kharsavan has actually indicted the cops and the doctors for negligence. Yeah. So we should really come to our senses. I think that nobody is going to defend this. Yeah. No, it's, it's absolutely, uh, it's, it's bizarre. Uh, Dr. Geeta Bhatt, let me come to you uh, next, uh, ma'am. Does this not appear to be an open and shut case of somebody trying to tamper with the law, take away murder charges against 11 people who beat up this man for seven hours, which resulted in his death? Well, uh, Vishnuji, uh, there are, you know, uh, the contradictory uh, statements here coming as we see what the, there is an echo if you can please get it corrected in terms of, uh, you know, the statements which has come from the, from the police and as what I could gather for a little bit from the discussion that was taking place, uh, you know, that the report, the postmortem report, it seems that there were two postmortems which were done and they both had the same, uh, you know, a same report, medical report, that uh, it was a heart attack and what could be the reason of the heart attack, that was the, sorry, that was the conclusion. To, sorry to interrupt. Uh, with something sorry which is being interrupt. questioned over here. So, you see, 
No, go ahead, Gita. Go ahead, Gita. Yes. Can I interrupt? No, ma no, sir. Just Can one more. Just, just one minute. I'll come to you. We've got plenty of time. Yes, Doctor I... Gita, go ahead. Yes. Yeah. So, Vishnuji, the point here is that uh, you know, uh, uh, as some people are saying that this could be given, you know, to some uh, other investigation agency like CBI. Well, one can, if, if there is a, if there is any, any element of doubt, then it needs to be done this way. But the point is that while, uh, you know, this case, which of course was something very unfortunate, uh, there are such large number of cases which have happened across the country for various reasons. I mean, I wish that each one of them, the medical report of each one of them could be discussed with such great length. And, you know, the culprits should be booked in each one of these cases, in, including that of uh, Tabrez. But somehow, you know, I mean, the, what happened to the, uh, the post-mortem reports of so many other victims who have, you know, who have been... Uh, uh, Look, Gita, I, I, I can't, I, I mean, it's, like it's, it's what, it's what one in, can, it's in what one can access. And I, so there could, I mean, there I, I've, so I've lost count cases. of the number so the of, of discussions on these, on these deaths due is, to lynching that, that we have done. Here. I mean, there would have been dozens of programs. But, you know, I, I, you've mentioned this in the past and we, know, and we couldn't agree more with you. Each one of these. In this report, there is no confusion. I mean, irrespective of, of what the circumstances are, the religion of the person, if that is what you're alluding to, it's all wrong. Lynching is wrong. It's, it's insane. It's crazy. Doctor, uh, Mr. Vikram Singh, let me come to you first, uh, come to you next. You, we, you were on this program yesterday when it seemed to be bizarre, the I... circumstances. But today, Mr. Singh, we've actually got this opinion regarding cause of death. We've got the post-mortem report as well. It's absolutely clear, and yet the police removes the charge of murder. To you, is this not a sign of a cover-up? Mr. Vishnu, between yesterday and today, we have traveled a very, very long distance. In your opening remarks, you said it was ludicrous. I would say the attitude of the police is malicious and perverse. In the face of this incontrovertible evidence, a brutalizing a person, his fracture on the parietal bone, parietal bone is the roof of the cranium, the strongest part of the body anyway. And if that was not looked into and that was ignored, I would like to, as a professional police officer, let me tell you, brutalizing a person for seven hours continuously, even the fittest of the fit are likely to get a cardiac arrest and a cardiac problem. I have seen what I know what I'm talking about. And this we debated yesterday at the cost of being censured. I said that this cardiac arrest was a consequence of the brutalizing that happened for seven hours. Today we have expert medical opinion on this uh, platform and they are saying, yes, it was a consequence. And I would say the discretion of the police should be on the side of the deceased, not on the side of the assassins. Here, for whatever reasons known to them, they are on the side of the assassins. I again said yesterday, please be accountable to the rule of law and to your own conscience. I would repeat that appeal even to the extent of crying horse but I would say be professional police officers you are accountable only to the Constitution of India and to nothing else and not to any manifesto of any political party the things are so simple as clear as daylight if you choose to look the other way let me assure you like Lady Macbeth you will not be able to wash the blood from stains from your hands for the rest of your life the Tabrez's blood is going to stain your uniform and your hands for till eternity Dr. Amalor Pavanathan, what you were discussing with me earlier on was also about the fracture sustained yes. on the head. Yes. Uh, fracture of the right frontoparietal bone of the skull and subarachnoid hemorrhage. And the point that you were trying to explain to me, and if you can explain that to our viewers, that for a 23, 24 year old man, the amount of pressure required to get a, a skull to be fractured is very significant. That this man, was hit in the most violent manner. How the, how the initial medical investigators didn't detect a skull fracture as serious as this seems bizarre. So I just quoting from medical textbooks, the skull bone is stronger than steel and concrete of the same 
mass. Secondly, it requires around 500 pounds per square inch to fracture a skull bone. You can imagine the kind of violence used on that particular boy's skull. Third point is, it is quite possible that he remains normal for some time and then dies of his injuries. It is called that uh, talk and die patients, that is what it is called. They can be perfectly normal for some time and then they can become drowsy, they can become confused and then they die. This is perfectly uh, uh, expected occurrence in head injuries. This is not something abnormal. So this delay can be understood. Again, and one more very important thing I wanted to tell here is there were no two postmortems. There was only one postmortem. The second one was just verifying the document submitted to them. They did not do a second postmortem. They just verified the document submitted from the first postmortem. Therefore, let us not please in, uh, spread the idea that there were two postmortems on this person. There was only one postmortem. Yeah. And the first postmortem does not tell you about the volume of blood there. Somehow it has found a place in the second document. The point is this young boy had a fracture in the skull and the skull bone is very, very difficult to break unless you use very hard force with a blood weapon. Number two, he had hemorrhage inside the brain and he died few days later. I do not think anything more is needed. I do not want to get into the technicalities whether it is homicide, culpable murder, etc. He died of his injuries. Cardiac arrest is just a consequence. All right. The heart may be in the chest, but the brain controls the heartbeat and the respiration. Let us remember that the respiratory center and cardiac center are in the brain. Doctor, um, how could doctors have missed um, a, a fracture in the, in, in the skull? Because yesterday it was said they did not send the patient for a chest uh, skull X-ray. You know what my colleague Bonadipa oh, yeah. discovered she today. The, yeah, she I, went to the doctor. Yes. And that doctor said he complained of a pain in his legs. Mm, yes. And so X-rays of his limbs were carried out when he had this catastrophic injury, a grievous injury on his skull. Shouldn't doctors don't aren't doctors supposed to understand? that you have to look at everything? Given the nature of the case and a, a patient may not be able to express yeah, this. Given the nature of the case and a medical legal case in which we are answerable for our life to the court of law, we have to be very, very methodical. There is no question of missing this. Mm -hmm. How it had happened or deliberately it was done is very difficult to say at this is stage, but this is to me it is something which is unexplainable and not natural and not called for and is not expected of a good CMO who is on duty in the casualty room. And uh, we have science to suggest if there is nobody to give history, we have science to suggest that there is a head injury by seeing the eyes, by seeing the pupil, by seeing the light reflex to the pupil, by seeing the neck rigidity. This is all taught to us by our senior teachers. And clinical medicine is supreme. Our days we did not have CT scans. We had x-rays, yes, but x-rays are done when you think of it. If you have not thought of it, it is probably a question of the clinical competence and making a judgment. It is very serious. I am very, I am not able to control myself because it is an unimaginably serious thing for not doing it which is, you see, to be done in a otherwise any other case also. I think there is another point here, Nalini, yes. I was coming to you, which is this. Could it be, and I ask this as could it be, I want to frame this question carefully, that, the, the, that this injury to the skull, the deadly one, was not there in the initial phases, that he was put in a police lockup, something happened over there and that is where he was injured. Well, I can only say what the, the district magistrate has said and he has pulled up the police, whether, but he of course has not gone to this extent to say that they are the ones who caused rain these blows, 500 pounds per square inch. inch. So yeah. I would just say uh, one thing is uh, if we look at uh, the case of BJP uh, MLA Sengar, ex BJ MLA uh, Sengar in, UP, in Unnao, uh, the victim's father was uh, arrested and taken to jail and beaten up there and he died 
I think two or three days later, maybe three days later. So, uh, and the charge which, which uh, now has uh, fallen upon those who rained those blows on him is murder. Yes. So I'm just saying that this, uh, we should now definitely not give up at all, but we should ask the police in Sarai Kela, how come you are saying that if the man dies four days later, it is going to be homicide? That it was not intentional, it was not intended to kill him, but it was, I mean, it just happened. I just want to say one thing. Uh, Vishnu, you know, I started, I mean, I was saying that we should have sympathy for ourselves because if we have to live in a country and I have, no, he could be called Tilak as far as I'm concerned. If he's called Tabrez, that's one thing. He could be called Tilak. I just want to say, if we live in a country where we have to hide our names and make them uh, religion neutral, like Sonu no, and Sheru and Pinky, that's, that's what's that's happening here. Right. Uh, Geeta, any last thoughts to you? Do you not believe the, the Jharkhand government needs to do something about this ASAP? The center needs to move in? Some court needs to take uh, cognizance of this and, 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 and look into this case? Well, Vishnuji, when, uh, well, if the legal, uh, you know, uh, the uh, medical experts, if they are uh, putting a question mark on, uh, you, you know, uh, on the report that has been submitted, medical report that has been submitted, and even if the magistrate has pulled up uh, uh, the police officials uh, on their conduct, then uh, definitely the case needs to be looked into. So that justice, you know, that Tabrez gets justice, but I just once again wish that there is a very long list and I would just like to m mention Jitu Mohan in Kerala who got brutally beaten up and then burnt alive. No one has ever bothered to look, look into his medical report. I would request you kindly do consider all such type of cases. As you know, as uh, another senior journalist Nalini ji has just said that, you know, it should be, it, why it should be religion neutral. Like it, uh, he could be Jitu Mohan, you know, he could be Tabrez, it could, he could be Hitesh Jadav, any one of them, you know, who have been so no, brutally look, killed, Gita, each one of them needs Gita, to be I, I try very hard not to make this into a Hindu versus Muslim thing. I am only reporting this on the basis of what documents we are given. It, if we are given documents to suggest somebody of another faith or, or whatever it is has been abused in this manner and, and allegedly charges have been taken away or whatever it is, we will look into that and report it to the best of our ability. This is not Hindu versus Muslim. If, if we look at it, it's, it's, it's humanity. It's us as Indians and it's life and it's death. And I so think that's why Indian we are, life, and, and it's, it's, it, it, it's our own, it's our own sensibilities, you know, as, as educated people and what we want of our country. Uh, I'd like to thank all of you for joining us.